You're watching Zach Pack TV. All right, YouTubers, better late than never. This is my under staircase project I got going on. It's for a dog crate. Um, it was a un big unused space that actually had, I did run into a snag. So this has been over a course of time I've been working on this. I just had a lot of other projects. So sorry for just now getting to, getting around to videoing this and not showing you the whole process, but at least you get the idea. Um, one thing I want to note on is when you're doing a project like this, make sure you're not going to get into too much electrical or other things. One of the things I didn't think I was going to get into was an air return. So this here, I actually built and fabbed up um, to help return the air and it's dark in here of course this is still open on the end but <clears throat> i built that channel and it actually goes up higher than the ceiling i just wanted to have enough space to where uh the air would rush through there it actually comes from a two by four studded wall and then comes over and then down into this channel and then it goes up and it just keeps following the staircase all the way up. So it was a little weird for a return to me. Um, no duct work, which I have found working on houses over time. Some use duct work, some don't. Some just use the drywall and studs. I don't know which is the right way. I mean, you can't really clean them anyways. They're unaccessible, so... Um, this one was anyways, but when I got into this big open area, this was actually deeper, about double the space going that way. On the other side of this wall, I actually built a, framed in a two by four wall here and put this plywood up. Um, but over on the other side, I'm making more of a storage closet for the, to the kids' uh, toys and stuff. So our dog is a petite dog and this will work great. It's actually bigger once she lays down, um, bigger than her actual crate. And for reference, her crate was the size of this pad here. So this pad would just barely fit into the crate. So she's getting a lot of more space and she will never hit the, the ceiling here. Um, Cause again, she has to make it through this opening, which isn't really, it, she's a medium sized dog and she clears it just fine. So, wanted to show you guys this. Oh, and a fun note is all this, all this construction material was free. Uh, it was left over from a job site. Uh, this is actually, I think, MDX board. Uh, it's for outdoor use, really, but it's already primed, and I'll just be painting it. I do have some trim pieces to go over. I did have some seams. Here's a seam, and there's a seam. Yeah, this was all left over from a job site. So I think I figured it up. I only got about 20 bucks in the whole project. This is not nailed down yet, but the transition strip was one piece I did have to find. What you'll find is if you already have a finished floor down, you really can't get away without having a transition unless you're laying the floor um, while you're doing this project and lay it all together. But this matched up pretty darn close color wise so I was happy with that I actually bought had to buy a tub of glue that was another thing that I didn't have to get this tacked down um, but I have a bunch of trim to finish this all out and quarter around so I'm actually making a gate right now for this opening that I'm going to get to up here next and I'm going to be using an oscillating tool to cut this out next and put my trim up so I can mount the gate um, so that's what's going to be going on next a side note, we got rid of the, we're going to be getting rid of the crate that was actually taking up space in our house and a big eyesore. So this will be, this will be a great upgrade for the house. All right, guys. So I got my stairway spindles here. They are like a black, uh, they're supposed to replicate black iron, uh, but I got them marked with a pencil to the lengths I need. Actually, I got this one turned around. But I'm keeping the ends with the factory, um, it's be the factory round, I'm calling it a round end. The other ends don't have that. Um, this is the end I'll put up at the top. But I'm going to use a metal, i got my metal cutoff wheel on my grinder here. I think it's got enough blade left to do this job. But um, 
I'm gonna be cutting them off with that. On to the next step. All right, so this is what I did to find center of the post. I laid out my door for my understair dog cage as I would if, um, well, if it was gonna be up and hanging. So I just butted the boards up, cut them down, butted them up. And really this process is really simple, guys. You want to make the door a little bit smaller. And um, I recommend going lower than higher at the bottom so your dog doesn't try to um, claw at the floor thinking it's gonna get out that way. It was just a thought. So, um, I know it's probably going to do it either way if it's wanting to try to get out, but my dog is almost three years old, actually three years old, and she's over that stage, so not going to have to worry about that, but I did um, lay this out to where I found center, marked my first spindle, and a dead center spindle. So, mark that spindle, and then what I did was I marked where my two by fours land. And then I took, oops, sorry, wow. then I took my um, number of spindles, divide them up and then laid them out on my board. I also came back and I took, uh, I marked, marked my marks and then I found center of the two by four and then just laid my two by four there and marked center. That way I have a nice crosshair on these. And then I just transferred these this line over. Um, and then now I'm gonna be cutting it. And I found out that I'm gonna need two different spade bits to do this job. Um, the first one's gonna be definitely a half inch for this round end. Um, I decided to keep it because I thought it was just gonna be, I don't know, you can kind of see it still when it, even though it's going in the board, but I just thought, what the heck, I'm just gonna roll with it. So I'm gonna put a link of these black iron stair, or they're actually steel, but they look like black iron. I'm gonna put a link in the description of the size of these. That way you guys, if you're building something similar, you can go and order it. Um, I don't know the exact make of these because they were, they've been in my barn, they were left over from a job, actually, I might know the exact make. They might still be in the box, I'll have to look. But I'll get you the same dimensions as these, that way if you're building something, you have something to go off of. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna drill these out, and I decided to go off of this measurement, which was three quarters of an inch on these ends. So I actually have a nifty little tool here that has it also has dowel rod ends, but um, I'm gonna get to this in a minute. It's from Harbor Freight for the depth. But for now, I'm actually going to take my spade bit and put a piece of painter's tape at three quarters so I know how deep to go in my two by four. just to see if that's what I want. And yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, so I'm just gonna drill out the rest of these. All right, and keep in mind when doing this sort of project, you want the holes small enough to where the spindles aren't gonna turn on you. Um, well, anyway, they can, but I want mine to where they don't. So I actually stepped my drill bit size down. I went with a drill bit this time because I had a 13 16 uh, drill bit that um, fit into my regular drill versus my impact. Uh, the half inch was, I did a test fit and it was allowing that spindle to spin. So I didn't want that, but that's okay because I made sure that the top here in the square part is not gonna spin. So I went, I also stepped this down to, uh, well, I went up in size. I, I started out with a 9 16 
but that was going to be too small. So I went to a 5 8 and a 5 8 was perfect for that. And what I'm going to do is, before I, I think I'm going to stain this last because I'm not going to have to worry about getting paint on the spindles. It'll be a dark stain. But I want to make sure I piece this together and make sure it's all going to fit together nicely. And I'm going to go out and get probably a rubber mallet um, so I can get this all put together. But the freight tool here and mark where my dowel locations are going to be uh, because those have to be drilled out before I put the spindle section together. Actually, it came with this neat little kit. Um, it comes with a drill bit that fits inside this end here. So you can put it in the, the, the opening of where you drill it out and match those boards up and you get a perfect fit every time. And this item number here, again, this was Harbor Freight. And of course I ripped the item number, but it's 96, 96880. That's a 34 piece set. I've already used it. Um, good set. It also will measure your depth. And so I'll just slide this over the drill bit and tighten it down to the correct depth. take my Gorilla wood glue. I'm going to get these turned up here and make sure that your holes are cleaned out. You don't want any debris in there that's going to keep those dowels from going in. And we're going to take this glue here. You can put a little bit on the end. That's what I like to do. Especially when the hole is smaller. And I might have to might have to break a seal on here. Nope. Looks like that was gummed up from the factory. All right, Gorilla Glue. Let's see if you'll work this time. Put a little glob on there and put your dowel in.
case I need to tap anything. going to get these dowels in or these uh, spindles in and if you didn't need a block of wood okay. so what I'm gonna do is just take a block of wood or a scrap piece Got these in and see if I can lift this up. Just gonna go around the dowel and that's just gonna help bond that wood and I'll even go over the dowel. And make sure that you are yeah, putting it back the way that you measured. Might have to spin it around in case you get it off the thing. So this is kind of the tricky part. Turn it so you guys can see. So I got the dowels in and the wood glue on. Um, I'm gonna have to remove these little spikes. This was the one that was wobbling a little bit. Okay. Now you're just gonna put the glue up here. Some of these might be a little longer. Others, that's okay. Actually, I think I'm gonna lay this down.
at this point, if you have clamps, I recommend using them. And I clamp everything together, get it nice and solid. Is that a way so you can see it? All right, this is another option, or you can go straight to um, installing L brackets, which is something I'm gonna do as well. But I'm gonna lean this up, hammer away at this because something isn't lining up here. There we go. That's all nice and tight there. I'm gonna throw the clamps on. And those are gonna be too short. Sand this down and get all the possible splinter spots down and knock off the sharp edges. So that's what I'm doing next. And I'm using a heavier grit. This is a hundred grit. Should work just fine. All right, guys, I got my paint em up brush and you guessed it, this was laying around. So uh, use what you can, use a rag. Um, I also put, I had, like an oak colored wood filler that I filled the cracks, all the cracks and knots and stuff that I didn't want our hands to get hung up on because uh, my kids will be opening this and stuff too. So, but I did get it all sanded down um, to where the rough spots and all the splinter areas were all taken care of. Uh, actually, I missed a spot. Just go through and make sure you didn't miss anything because once you got the stain on, it's kind of a done deal unless you want to restain it. Stain it down and restain it again. Stain I'm using today is a uh, Min Wax and it's a uh, poly shade. Let's see, the color is Bombay Mahogany. Gloss. So, the uh, reason why I'm going with this, well, you guessed it, had it laying around. But um, we don't have much wood color in our house. And I probably might do a little bit of sanding on this after I get it stained just to get the uh, right, uh, I guess, the right look I'm going for. Kind of want it to stay rustic, but also want that darker wood color. So, we'll see. Uh, maybe I'll just coat this on and be done. Um, I might even switch to a rag here in a minute if I decide that that's going to be an easier way to applicate it. Um, the brush will be good for in between like the spindles and stuff. But just keep in mind if you don't do it all in one coat and you come back, it's going to make it darker in areas. So always finish a little area that you're working on before you start another area because you will come back and darken it if you're brushing over it all. And I'm not sure yet, but I might spray a clear coat over this when I'm all said and done. We'll just see if it's sticky or not. Sometimes if you stain something and it needs a good gloss coat or uh, some kind of coat 
protector coat just to, well, protect the stain and keep your hands from every time you touch it. Uh, it want it will want to stick to you. So I'm gonna paint everything I can or stain everything I can, then flip it over. Don't worry about getting a little bit on the spindles. It'll wipe right off. Just have a rag handy. Alright guys, so I got my door stained and um, all sanded down. I actually sanded down a bit and wound up with this consistency, which I'm going to go with it. Kind of gives it a rustic, almost a burnt look. Um, and I have something I want to share with you. Again, this is something I had laying around, but hey, this is what will work good for an oil stain. This is a a wipe on poly it's got a little bit of a yellow tint to it but since I'm going over stain it's not going to show if you were using a paint you could use a water base wipe on poly so if you're going to use a poly just figure out what what you need an oil or a water base um, this is a time saver at first I just thought oh that's kind of a gimmick thing well can't tell you how many times I've used this to touch up stuff uh, it beats popping a can open and get it all over you. This, you just, I put a rubber glove on, screw the top off and add to the rag what I need and wipe it on and let it dry and you're good to go. So I'm gonna get on this and then we'll be hanging the door after it dries. All right, I got it this far. Uh, I got the desired stain I wanted and actually there was a lot of red in that mahogany stain. So I actually came back with Rust-Oleum like a tan spray paint that I had, again, laying around. <laughs> I got a lot of stuff laying around, but um, then I just went, I sprayed and then wiped down the areas until I got this consistency and I'm happy with it. So I flipped over my gate and I got these brackets out. This actually is gonna be the back of my gate, but if you guys wanted to put these on the front just to add more character, you could. Uh, you could paint them black or just leave them the chrome silver looking color from the factory. But what these are going to do is add as an extra support because I'm not counting on a single dowel rod. I just kind of did the, the dowel uh, pin to, to kind of keep stuff in place and glue it all. And I could have probably used two, but I knew I was putting these on. So I just did one, but um, do what you want, do what you think's best. And I'm gonna get these mounted up. Again, this is gonna be the back side. So I'm actually moving these to about the middle and I offset it a little bit so I'll miss that dowel pin. So I won't be drilling through it and splitting it. So I'm gonna, I got my drill here. I'm gonna pre-drill each hole and I got my Phillips uh, bit and I got my Phillips screws that came with the pack. And here is the size of the four by three quarter inch uh, bracket. And I bought these at Menards. There's four of them. They're zinc plated by National Hardware. So if you're looking to get something similar, you can check that out or check out the box store shelves and see what you can find. Again, you can paint these or leave them. You can put them on the back or the front. I chose to put them on the back so there wasn't much going on on the front because with these I just thought it was too much. So do what you want. All right, so I got my brackets on and it's super rigid now. It really beefed it up. That's gonna help keep 
uh, the dog in as well. So I highly recommend doing that. And now on to, oh, and I don't want to leave out, depending on the hardware you use, it's probably going to be best to put those on the back regardless because it might get in the way of your hinges. But I chose this flush or this uh, outside mount hinge because I knew I was going to screw into the um, existing trim that I'm going to be putting up here in a minute. And then this would be on the face in it regardless. So um, I figured why not? I mean, I could have tucked, I could have got a hinge that you just saw the front here, but this was more rustic and the hinge part itself would actually be hanging out. So I thought, why not just go a little more rustic? And I bought these black their uh, gate hinges I think is what they're well they don't really say what they're for they're just extra heavy T hinges so um, maybe the kids can hang on them and go for a ride let's hope not but if they do I think we're in good shape so we're gonna pop these on uh, here in a minute but now I'm gonna go to the trim inside and get that buttoned up all right so i got it pretty close this piece actually came out pretty easy i didn't have to use too much effort it just split uh, i'm also going to be using my razor blade but you want to make sure that you're not going to be damaging the floor that's going to be seen that trim's going to you make sure that trim's going to cover it if you do nick it. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to use this razor blade to kind of notch saw away at this piece that's being stubborn. Keep prying and making sure that... There we go. Got some of that, more of that off. Now I can either hammer or cut away at it again. You just don't want to split the trim that's staying, obviously. All right, we're into the second day on this and I wanted to share with you a few things. One thing with this opening was I was faced with this outlet being super close to the um, trim work. So I knew I was gonna have to go with a skinnier piece of trim. It actually is a little wire, wider than a regular uh, door casing trim. Uh, I'm standing by one right now and it's two and a quarter is what a normal one is and I actually ripped this one down in a saw to make it two and a half because I wanted it to be as thick as possible uh, to mount the hinges and hardware and I also wanted it flat so this was actually a piece of trim similar to this that I ripped down and I still have to go back I filled some holes I still need to go back and paint this one more one last time but I ripped it down and then I took a I thought it might make it a little bit more rustic, but I end up painting it anyways. 
but I took a masonry grinding blade on my grinder and I just smoothed these edges and then I sanded them. I kind of rounded them off. You could router them, something like that, but this was a quick option and got the job done and I got the results I wanted. So went ahead with that and um, this trim in here is actually another form of door casing. It fit perfect for the two by four. It's an it's four, let's see, four and a quarter inch wide. Yeah, four and a quarter inch wide. And I didn't have to cut that or anything. And that was something else I had on hand already. And it's really thin. I think it was, uh, I wanna say it was maybe three eighths to a quarter inch thick. It was one of the two. But um, yeah, this was a little tedious. Trying not to nick the floor and uh, I think it turned out great with the transition strip. I tacked it on the ends here with brad nails because it was already pretty solid. Once I got it down, it wasn't moving much. Kind of, I kind of pinched it in there. And I still need to touch up this quarter round. <clears throat> but yeah, here's the door. And I don't know if I took a video of it yet or not, but there's the brackets. And I centered them because I knew that they, they weren't going to be seen and it was going to give the best structural support for that so i also wanted to share with you guys everything was about four inch when it came to the hardware the latch i picked up was four inch and the hinges are four inches but i also grabbed a three inch because i wasn't sure about where this would land on the two by four all right and i found these door these hinges will work perfect with these two by fours they're actually the same width at the of a two by four almost um, and you can line it up and pretty much eyeball it but what I'm going to do is pre-drill these holes onto the door and this also helps to line this hinge up <clears throat> level um, by swinging it over like I just did like this and that that gives you the perfect gap and pretty much perfect placement so I'm just going to line this up eyeball it pre-drill the holes screw them in and then I'll show you what I do next to um, mount the door to the trim. My son's helping me now and we're getting this door hung up. Um, I did use the little shim, just find whatever kind of something that gives a little bit is nicer that you can adjust in and out. Um, we got lucky we could kind of adjust this in and out and I was able to hold um, this up here and Really just, you can eyeball it at that point if you need some adjustment to fit your opening. This opening wasn't, I mean, perfectly square, which most aren't. So um, we got it to where it opens and closes the way we want. So now we're gonna remove the shim and we also started two screws just to make sure that the door was gonna open the way we wanted it to. So now we're gonna remove our shim, um, add the, remaining screws, and then we're gonna mount the hardware. All right, so, I got my lovely model here. She's gonna demonstrate it. So it looks like this. And I got some stuff in there. Yeah. And then we paint all this. Right, we're gonna we paint, paint it. this. And we, and I paint this. We stained it. And paint this. All right, guys, the door is up, and we love it already. Yeah. Uh, we've already tried it out, and, so you go and the dog and likes it. Um, actually, we found out that this door will over-travel a little bit, yeah. so I'm going to put a little blocker um, on the other side, like a door, like a yeah. typical door would have right here. That way it can't over-travel and get pushed in. Yeah. Um, obviously, when it's locked, it doesn't get pushed in, but kids open and shut it might. Uh, bend the, you don't want the latches to get bent or the hinges to get bent. So we're going to take care of that. But yeah, this is it. Um, I still have some paint and trim work to do in there, but this. And they sh shut the door. And Katie will neck it and she will the tail. And I'll put in the description the measurements and how tall the opening is. Thanks for watching.